morning we begin with uh, parish profiles. Last year the, um, the priests working in MSC parishes gathered together to basically prepare for this particular conference. They didn't know it at the time, but it was the thoughts that came out of that, out of that gathering that led to this particular conference. And to prepare for the conference, there were two things that we needed to do. And one was to develop what's called parish profiles. And uh, Paul Compton, who is part of the parish committee, obviously, um, is going to present now what they reveal to us about the shape of future structures in our parish. Before we get to the parish profiles, let's just have a look, bit of a look at the MSC profile. Now these, these graphs are a bit complicated, so I'll have to explain them carefully. Say, take this, this bar here. That means there's about 17 MSCs between the age of 70 and 75, between, uh, between the age of 65 and 70. So this is the five years up to 70. The five years up to 75, there's, there's, there's 25 of them. The little red bits are where there's priests from, from overseas, so uh, India and, and, and so on. The line there going up is the cumulative number. So, for MSCs below 85, well, all together, and we're on this axis now, there's about 130 MSCs. Um, when we come to those below 80, there's about 100 below 80. But when we get down to, say, uh, about 50, there's only, when we get down to, sorry, say, his, his 50 year olds, there's only about 25 less than, than, than 50. So there's an ageing, it's an ageing group, and if we look at the, the average age, 73 is the average age of Australians. That's excluding the, the overseas uh, MSCs. And the number of these over, overseas MSCs, 13 of the 38 MSC, 65 and under, are from overseas. Now, this includes MSCs working in Australia and the Australian missions. So clearly, as the MSCs age, there's people coming from places where they were missionaries before coming to work, work in Australia. Now, the same data, but breaking it down to different areas people work. So it's the same histograms, but the blue bits are the numbers working in parishes. The red bits are the numbers working in missions. And why? the overseas missions, and why I put that in is clearly overseas missions have always been a key area for the MSC. And then green is people doing other things. They might be giving retreats, lectures, chaplains in jails, but looking at the age distribution of them, a lot of them are actually retired. And then these two lines are the cumulative numbers of um, of MSCs working in parishes and missions. And what's interesting, it's a very similar number, total number working in both uh, the miss missions and, and, and parishes. And if we look again at the, the details, 67 is the, the average age of MSCs in parishes. And again, of those under 65, almost a third are from overseas. So a number of the overseas MSCs are also working overseas, but in MSC missions, say for example in, in Vietnam where the Australian MSCs have started out. They've got MSCs from the Philippines and other places working with them, but it's an Australian um, endeavour. If we look at this now in terms of um, what it means for parishes, these are all the MSC parishes, but also parishes where MSCs are working, but they're not, they're not really the responsibility of the MSC. So places like Henley Beach, Randwick and so on, MSCs run those parish, MSCs are obliged to produce priests. But say Burke, 
um, whether it's an MSC working as the parish priest, he's working directly for the bishop, and when he finishes up, it's the bishop's responsibility to find someone else. So those places I've got in italics, but that's, they're all the places the MSCs are working in parishes. Now, if we cross out the places where the youngest MSC is over 65, uh, Erskineville goes, Burke goes, Adelaide Cathedral goes, sorry Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Kings Meadow goes, Moona goes. That's where the youngest MSC, Australian MSC, is over 65. If we then cross out the places where the youngest Australian MSC, not the international guys, the youngest Australian MSC is between 60 and 65, we cross out just about everything. So, so I thought it would be useful to put this up to make, every, to make it very clear to everybody that we're really running out of a, a priest. And if we just represent this in a different way, the only places where there's an MSC under 60, uh, Coogee, Camp Hill at the moment, except Camp Hill is, is, is closing and he's going to move somewhere else, and then three parishes up in the, up in the Northern Territory. And so if you look at Coogee, at, I think Terry Bowman, I've got in there as under 60, but he turns 60 next month, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so, the, so the message from this is sometime in the next five to 10 years, the only priests that are going to be available are priests who are quite old, who probably should be retired or international priest, unless there's some extraordinary turnaround. Okay, now let's look at the, the actual parishes themselves, the parish profiles. Not everybody re replied to the, the, the request for information, and secondly, people replied in all sorts of strange ways. So, so don't take this data as, as, as gospel. It's, if you like, the best sort of compromise expression of the data. Now this is, is, is mass attendance. And you can see Randwick is by, by far the, the biggest parish. But then Kipax, uh, Darwin Cathedral, Henley, Blackburn are the next sort of the next biggies. Now Darwin's a bit anomalous because it's actually a, a, a cathedral. And it's not really an MSC parish, but it has been and might be again, so I, that's why I've included it. But I didn't, for example, include Adelaide Cathedral, part one, because there was no data, and because it's not an MSC responsibility. Um, now, as John Mulroney said the other night, 10% of Catholics go to Mass in Australia. It's, the statistics actually is 10.6%. The MSC parishes pretty much are about 10%, except Henley is... <coughs> appears to be 28%, Darwin Cathedral 18%, and Randwick 28%. Darwin's a cathedral, it's a tourist place, so that's a bit of an anomaly. Randwick, maybe there's lots of students and so on who are not actually identified as Catholics living in Randwick. But Henley is pretty interesting. I don't know whether Henley is just a very urban place or is there some other anomaly? But for the rest of the parishes, it's, it's about 8 to 12 per cent uh, people go to Mass. Number of Masses um, at each place. Randwick's the standout with eight Masses every Sunday. The others, three or four. If we look at this against the number of, of priests, um, Kuji, for example, there's only one priest, but he says four masses. Mostly where there's one priest, they're saying three masses on a Sunday. Where I've got a plus next to the number of priests, it's because there's a priest or priest in the parish um, who have got who've got other responsibilities, but also say mass on Sunday. So so Blackburn because it's a, 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 a training house. Um, Randwick's got priests who are, who are chaplains in the hospitals uh, round, round about. 
If we look at the other sacraments, okay, now, this time, blue is, is the number of baptisms. And blue is over on this axis over here. So the number of baptisms, you read it over here. So Randwick has 180 baptisms per year. Um, Kipax has about 70 baptisms per year. The red and the green, red is weddings per year, and green is, 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 is funerals per year. Now, I've, I've got no idea what this means, but I'll just highlight a few interesting things for you. If, if you look at Randwick and Coochie, I've put up about, well first of all, they look like they've got a bit of a similar sort of profile and their parish is next to each other. But if you put up the, the numbers of people who go to Mass in those places, there's you know, three times as many people go to Mass in Randwick as Coogee. But Coogee's got two-thirds the number of baptisms, you know, half the number of, of, of weddings, and two-thirds the number of funerals. So Coogee, even though it's a much smaller parish, has a disproportionate number of the, the, these three sacraments. Well, except a funeral is not a bit not being a sacrament. But if we look at um, in Adelaide, Henley and Highmarsh, Henley has 700 people going to mass on Sundays. Highmarsh only has 445. But clearly, everybody in Highmarsh is dying off. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> But they're, but they're getting married in Heart Marsh at about the same rate. A real contrast, if we look at Kip Axe over there and Blackburn up this end. Um, excuse me. Yes. But those statistics are, are just not right. <laughs> we would be lucky to have between five and ten weddings a year. Very lucky. And we've had about 40 baptisms. And um, I well, know that for sure because um, I am just with the baptized families. Okay. Well, as I said, there were, there were problems with this data, how people reply. <laughs> <laughs> but this all comes from data that the parishes have, 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 sent, have sent back. That, that wedding figure is just so way off. <laughs> 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 So where, where, which, which, where are you? Blackburn. Ah. Well, that's, that's, the, that's the data of it. Okay, so, so I, I, I won't make this point, but the difference between Blackburn and Kipax. But the, I guess the, if you like, what's the best indicator of people belonging to a parish? Weddings, people shop around, where there's a nice church, they go there, where there's a not such a nice church, they move el elsewhere. But funerals, you probably do get buried, buried in the parish you, you belong to. So in fact, Blackburn, Moona, Erskineville and Randwick all have the same number of people dying. So in terms of older Catholics, they're all pretty similar, but they're all totally leaving aside the, the wedding anomaly. <laughs> they're, all to, they're all totally different in terms of, uh, of, of, of other, other sacraments. I mean, Moona, very few people getting married. Um, at likewise, Erskineville, and the baptism rate really quite, quite low. Okay, so this, these are the numerical, bits, pieces of numerical data I could extract from the statistics. And, I, I totally accept this anomalies, but it gives you some, some idea. This next slide is probably, uh, no, no, we're not to a different. Mass attendance and income. Since we're talking about lay involvement and full-time lay involvement is going to require salaries, I've put up the income that the different parishes get, and again, how people answered income is a bit unclear. Say, for example, some parishes might run a kindergarten. Have they included the income that they get from the kindergarten along with what's in the collections? I, I don't know. So 
there's again there's some questions about the the, the data. But you can see by and large the uh, the money coming in is proportional to the people going to um, going to mass. Except again, I guess I get a bit bit of anomaly. Uh, Blackburn people tend to give more, or maybe it's these these weddings that don't occur. Maybe people are paying, <laughs> <laughs> they're paying deposits for the rest of the church or something. And um, if we look then at the number of lay staff, because if the secretary is in a parish, but say, where does a parish manager, what's an appropriate salary for a, a, a parish manager? Because I know Marion well, I know that parish managers so far are grossly underpaid, but what would you expect someone in that sort of fairly responsible position to be paid? Probably an average wage, 70,000 a year, on costs, another 20,000. So 90,000 for having a full-time full -time worker. Now the income, yeah, round ranks up around over half a million, but everybody, a lot of others are down 100, 2,000, so by the time they're paying insurance, debts, cleaning, all sorts of things, how much money is left for, for salaries? Okay, so here are the number of employees. Blackburn is again anomalous. The, the sheet said four people. But not full-timers. No. no, no. So the others are all people put down. There might be two or three people, but they've all got part jobs, and they have indicated what percentage. So these are all full-time equivalents, except for, 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 for Blackburn. One of the interesting things is, and we'll come to this in a minute, Henley has got the, the highest number of people employed and it's a single priest parish, but in terms of, of mass attendance, um, it's, it's, it's really sort of quite high. So John Rake clearly has paid salaries for people to do things because just by himself it's too big a parish. Rampic is, is a very large parish, um, but only 1.5 people uh, there, so if we, if we had the priests in as well, you can, you can see the difference. Randwick's got three priests, but also another priest doing other duties. Where, as I said, in Henley, John Raid's by, by himself. Most of the other places where there's a single priest, they've got half a person, you know, work, working for them, point two of a person uh, at, at, at night, night clear. Um, Okay, so that's, that's the, the data on money coming in and employment of, 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 of lay staff. And clearly, the dollars coming in related to lay staff is a bit of a, an issue. And if we look at the dollars per person per mass attendee, uh, the average is $434 per year, so $8 per week. Uh, Blackburn is the, the highest at, 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 at 680 per year. So, I mean, this is not about getting in more money, but clearly if there are going to be people working in paid positions in parishes, more money has got to sort of come from somewhere. Now, the next, this next slide <coughs> is probably the most important slide, but it's going to be very hard for you to read, so I'll, I'll sort of explain what it is. The first, the first grey patch is where there's people in individual roles. So, oh, thanks, 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 Phil. So, so Kipax has got a manager. Uh, Henley has got a, a youth worker and a family coordinator, both part-time positions, but paid positions. Is it about like a youth worker? and a family coordinator. What other roles are there? I've got Nightcliff down as having a pastoral assistant who's a, who's a nun. There might be other pastoral assistants in those sorts of roles, but I didn't have information on them. The next, the, the purplish, uh, well, if you like, <coughs> social justice. Everybody has still got St Vincent de Paul going, pretty much, the top line. But also in terms of refugees, 
uh, or social justice groups or, or caring, caring groups, well, particularly probably social justice and refugees, since that's a, sort of a key part of the Amnesty mission, they're pretty well represented across the parishes. The next line, just the yellow one, is a single one, and I've got it called organisation. It relates to KIPAX. What's happened in KIPAX? KIPAX has been divided up, and Marion can maybe tell us how well this is working, into different geographical areas, and there's a person or a couple sort of responsible for that area, knowing who's sick, knowing where there are issues, keeping in contact with people, say, taking some sort of responsibility for Catholics in each geographical area. And that's, that's unique to, to, to KIPAX. Youth groups are still alive and well, and mainly, mainly, mainly Antioch. <coughs> the next one, the blue one, I'm not sure what you'd call it, but I've got a relationship spirituality. So Tens of Our Lady, marriage in, encounter, uh, newly married uh, groups, but not, a, not in many places. Kibax, Randwick, um, Camp Hill, and, and Henley has got all, all three of these. It's interesting, if you, we'll, we'll come to this, come to that, another point. This pinkish one here, family spirituality, Legion of Mary, passionless family groups, other family groups, mass going parents, traditional groups that have been around in, in parishes, and I guess you characterise them in, in that way. There's also a number of groups that I'd say is more social. Uh, Catholic women, social committee, seniors, over 45s, craft group, Then there's like adult education, RCIA, Bible study, book club, um, Henley, uh, Kipax has got a, a bookstore, uh, Preka, the, oh, I forgot to mark where they are there, in Kindmarsh, which is the, um, the con con Congregation of Christian Doctrine. Yeah, but I think this is lay people associated. I don't know. Okay, good read. Um, and then finally, um, prayer groups, meditation groups of, of various, various kinds. I guess what's an interesting question about all of this, I've got up there, this is headed of lay leadership, but I've got a, a question mark, because how much of this is, has come from a priest who's called lay people in, or has it actually come from, from lay people? So Henley Beach has got a lot of activities. Has that depended on priests who have been there who've really been very energetic with these sorts of things? Kipax likewise, got a lot of things. Randwick, a fair few. The others, not so many of these sorts of activities from the data I was provided. And, and again, that, that's probably not complete. Can I just ask a question? Yeah. What year is the data from? The, from from earlier this year, the the the. Because you're missing everything that Linda's part time March Parish does with our Nazareth community since Finton's joined it. So we tick a lot more of those boxes okay. down. That's Absolutely. that. That's quite likely because, yeah. As I said, people answered these book, filled in these questions in very different ways. And we do too. And there's a lot missing from the background. Okay. We uh, we haven't said anything. Was when the Kensington was changing, so the, I'm, I'm sorry, I meant to explain that. <laughs> okay, so I'll do a little program, and Phil's now going to facilitate this. But there was there was there was a question, and the first question is, what do we do well in our parish? But then looking at other parishes, what could we do well in our parishes? And I guess a the question for me is, who's the we? Is this actually really 
lay people initiated, or is it is it um, is it parish priests initiated? So who's this? Who's this we? And what sort of leadership do people need? Like clearly, when these things are introduced, they go. People are involved. It happens. But how do you? What sort of leadership do you need to sort of get things started? So, <coughs> you want Thank you, thank you, Paul. Um, and what we, we always know, given the data, there's, uh, there's this question of uh, where the data comes from and how things are filled in and the interpretation of it. But there's a there's an overview and there's something there for you to react to and to, to correct and to engage with. So don't be too worried if uh, if it hasn't accurately reflected what the situation is for you at the moment. There's an opportunity for you to, to discuss, to, just to give you something to bounce off and to to, uh, to react to and to relate to. 